I think everybody's underweight the merge still. Yeah. People will get into the merge or post-merge, we'll get this spike. We probably get a pullback. A lot of people will say, see, it's going back to the low. My guess is it corrects sideways, does something or back into the range for a bit, and then we explode higher. So I'm very bullish right now. You know, short term, we're getting close to the oversold, overbought, but I think we've just had a correction. My guess is we go again. What's fascinating is to see the forwards markets and the futures markets is everybody's hedging ETH merge risk. So they're buying ETH, selling the futures. Now, somebody's going to have to lift that hedge off at some point. And so I, I find that setup really interesting. And you, I know the crypto hedge funds are all underweight still because they got beaten up so badly. And so they've been buying calls as the way of having something on for the merge so they can get beaten up by their investors. So it's like when you see that kind of setup, the path of pain is still higher. Yeah, although I I do worry about the you know um, buy the rumor, sell the news risk. For and sure, I, I think everyone believes, and I mean everyone believes that the merge is is good. Nei fifteen, what fifteen fifty nine fifteen, whatever whatever the number is, I can't remember. Uh, is is all good. I, you know, I, I I can make some cases on the other side. And I think when everyone's on one side of the boat, to your point, they're all increasing long. Now, some are shorting that that level. But I, I don't know, I'm 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 not there yet. So I I have refrained from backing up the truck any. I think the move from 900 to 2000 was kind of the move for now. And, and I think we're gonna have to settle before we, we go higher. I know there are a lot of people, oh, 10,000 by the end of the year. Yeah, no, I'm- That's I'm, aggressive. I'm, <laughs> of a similar, I'm of a similar camp. I, I do think it goes a bit higher to the, the um, 2300 level, 2200 level. And then I expect to pull back, whether that's pre-merge, post-merge, I don't know. I yeah. don't really care, to be honest. It's kind of like, right. you know, right. You know what? What are we setting up here? We're setting up something very interesting, which is a a yielding asset that can be the benchmark rate for all of Web three. So, I yeah. kind of think over time it's going to bring in a lot of institutional interest. This narrative of true believers versus investors. The big breakthrough of what crypto does is the incentive based program of you can participate in the network and make money and still believe in it, right? So it doesn't matter. You don't have to be that Bitcoin libertarian who wants to fight for total privacy and total freedom. It's not relevant. It is to them and that's their fight. And that's fine, right? Everybody has a different reason. But what I'm seeing is massive corporate adoption. Uh, I don't think anybody realizes Ticketmaster have distributed 10 million NFTs. Right, all of tickets are going on to Web3, everything. So everything. if we want to talk about how to get to the next 100 million, it'll happen at paces we don't yet understand. There are many of these Web3 projects of corporates that we don't even know about that have done million, have put millions of people into this economy. But once you're in, you've got the wallet. Once you're in, you start thinking, okay, what else is this? What can I do? And it comes. You see, money is money and making money is not a use case for everybody. It's a use case for people who want to invest and want to make money out of it. But the enabling of blockchain technology at scale is something we won't even notice. I mean, I've seen there's some amazing wallets like Vatom who don't even have you don't even know what blockchain your tokens are on. It doesn't matter, right? So you don't do this, you know, long string, all of this, you drag and drop. And it can be Solana, it could be ETH, it could be anything, and it works. It's like, and then it won't become that because then I go to a concert, I get a ticket, my ticket goes into my wallet, that becomes a memento. It may give me unlock to other access, something else. There are a bunch of people who don't care about adoption Ah, yeah. say they want adoption on their terms. Now, yeah. having been Fair. around for a while, things don't happen on your terms. You can't dictate terms. However hard you try, you can't. 
you accept the terms of this distributed network of millions of people who are using cryptocurrency, that will be where it goes. That's consensus. Consensus is not, you must follow my rules. And if not, you're polluting this because all you're actually doing is driving people away. It's, you know, the more fundamental side of religion pushes more people away than yeah. the more moderate side of religion, which is more accepting. It's, 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 it's so obvious. And always in psychology, the thing you fear the most is the thing you manifest. Other parts of Web3 could overtake Bitcoin and then you start fighting it saying you can't do that you you will only yeah, contribute money is not the only thing that web3 solves here there's a gazillion things of which the bitcoin blockchain in its current state does not solve yeah. and that's okay these yeah. are different things we've already said it's a hundred vol asset class it will have 75 percent drawdowns and those are opportunities every time it does it's a life-changing risk reward so even if now i mean i think we all think the low is in but let's assume it's not. Let's say there's another 50% downside from here. Well, the upside when you get to these kind of levels after the sell-off is about 10 to 20x. So 50 basis points downside, 10 to 20x upside is like, you know, Mooch, we've been in the business for a long time. You never get these opportunities yeah. in your lifetime. You might get one if you were lucky in some VC deal but in an entire market that goes up 20x and it does it periodically in this exponential trade, we never get this. Volatility gives the reward, right? Right. So because it's a 70 vol asset, gives these 20, 50, 100x, depending on what time period you're looking at. And people just are not set up for that because they are mean reversionists. They think the world is cyclical and everything reverts back to where it was. So therefore, every boom has a bust and every bust brings it back to where it started. But that's not what happens here. It's in an exponential trend. So every bust is significantly higher. I mean, Bitcoin 4,000, Bitcoin 20,000. Okay. And that's low to low. I mean, that's extraordinary. But people don't see that. They're not used to it. They don't know how to deal with it. So people are having to learn. I mean, all of us did. I mean, I, I yeah, was shit at doing course. this because I never realized how in an exponential trend, buying and holding and adding into the big sell up set offs it's better. I went back and looked at all the times I traded Bitcoin from 2013 when I first got in at 200. I rode it up. To, it went up to it went up to 2,000 uh, to 1,000. So it went up 5x in two months. Went all the way back down 85%. I just held it because I, I wanted to treat it like an option. I wanted to see, and I had a 10-year view. And so, and I said, listen, it's probably going to 100,000. Worst case, a million. Best case, over the next. 10 to 20 years. So I held it, it went back 85%. It rallied all the way back up and I got out during the forking wars uh, in 2018, 17. And I've made 10 times my money and thought I was a genius. It went up another 10x and then came back down again. So it was fine. I went back and then I rebought in 2020 in that sell-off. I went back and did the maths on my much smaller position that I started with versus the much bigger when I really went in, you know, irresponsibly long in 2020, if I'd have just held my original stake, I'd have made five times as much money by not. And I traded it well. I made money every time. And if I'd have just held it, I'd have made 5x. If I'd have just doubled, just keep adding my original stake every time it sold off in the big cycles and got down to that five year moving average, I'd have made 25x. I'm like, Ral, you're a fucking idiot.